I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're diving into Imagination, Volume 1 by William Demps. It is a fascinating nonfiction novel that explores the boundaries between nightmares and dreams, reality and imagination. William, a combat veteran of the U.S. Navy, uses his real-world experiences and psychic insights to ask deep questions about human potential and the modern world. Imagination Volume 1 promises to challenge your perspective and ignite your creativity. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support authors like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing his amazing book. The links are below this interview. William, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Nice to meet you as well. Nice to have you on the show. Excited to talk to you about this outstanding book you have created. Talk to us a little bit about how your experiences in the Navy shaped your perspectives that you voice in the book. Well, you know, you know, boot camp is always kind of a crazy conversation. You know, the transformation of becoming a civilian into an active duty personnel. And, you know, there, it's just a rough ride. There's a lot of theories as to, you know, how you're supposed to be in the military. And then as soon as you get out of boot camp, you get into, you know, what it's like to be on the fleet. I had some pretty troubling experiences with hazing and some other stuff. And, you know, one of the most divisive things that I had with my Marine dad was that there's two types of people in the military. You have people that go into combat and you have people that do not go into combat. And unfortunately, it's kind of hard to tell who can go into combat. One of the, I don't want to say one of the worst things that I experienced that went into imagination but I actually went out into combat illegally. Uh, I was not supposed to be on the USS Gunston Hall at the time. And I went into a combat situation illegally for the woman that I loved, which was at the end of the book. And unfortunately, things kind of went sideways from that deployment, be that there was some other hazing stuff. There was some sexual assault stuff. Um, and people were just showing their true colors, you know, in the face of adversity. And when I was writing Imagination, it was kind of understanding, you know, where I was at in that time frame, you know, who I was, you know, why I enlisted in service. And I wanted to see the world. I wanted to know where I was at, you know, within the world. You know, I was an aerographer's mate, which was a, which was a weatherman in the military. And I have seen water spouts. I have seen weather phenomena. I've seen really crazy just things out at sea. You know, when you're out in the middle of the ocean and you see your first water spot, it's literally like a tornado coming out of the ocean, literally just spinning, just being completely, totally insane. And, you know, you will have hailstones this size attacking the ship, like this big and bigger. Wow. You know, you'll see lightning just striking the ocean. You'll see flying fish. You'll just see just a maelstrom of just straight up chaos. And that's one of the things I loved about being in the Navy because I was able to see, you know, where I'm at in the world. You know, we think about global warming, you know, pollution at sea. When you're that far out, let's say at zero, zero at the equator, you know, literally zero, zero, if you were to put that on the map, the ocean is pristine clear. Like it's so clear when you look straight down, the ocean is reflecting the sky and it's just going to be something so clear that it's reflecting the sky so deep that it becomes blue. It's really hard to explain. What makes it actually kind of more fascinating is that depending on what's going on with, you know, the moon, for example, let's say you have a new moon. Uh, you will not be able to see the hand in front of your face, even with the red lights in front of the ship. And it's just one of those things where, like, where are we at, like, in the world of things? And if you have a new moon, you will see all the stars in the sky. And just, to, I don't want to say add insult to injury, but just adding to, like, you know, the scenery of things. If you don't have any sea waves out, out in the middle of the ocean with the new moon, you can see all the stars in the sky. Uh, it's going to feel like you're actually in outer space. No, no BS. Um, so, you know, just having these really wild, fantastical, grounded experiences. And I was actually part of the, the, the uh, relief effort in Haiti in 2010 when the earthquake disaster happened. So we were there on the Gunston Hall before the USS Comfort arrived. And it was just every X-rated thing you can think about was totally there. Um, you know, femur bones just sticking out of women. You know, people were just, you know, urinating, just dying on top of each other. People were burning bodies. I mean, I had children die in my hands. It was just a complete... It was it was a war zone. And then it's like, you know, I've seen Bibles get destroyed. Churches were falling down and, you know, things were on fire, buildings. Pretty much everything was just catastrophic. And, you know, having those experiences bled into my writing, it bled into my imagination. And when I was writing Imagination, particularly volume one, I was tapping into those things. 
And I was trying to figure out, you know, where are we at in the world? What are we doing with our hands? You know, I am a professional baker as a, as a day job. And it's just one of the most humbling things because it's like, you know, as a disabled veteran, you know, one, I can still be functional in the real world outside of my creativity. And then two, you know, we live in a very crazy place. You know, we oftentimes, you know, and I was tapping into this with Imagination Volume 1, people want things to be, you know, nine to five, normal, straight edge, you know, even, you know, with, you know, political correctness or with the LGBT stuff, people want things for what they want them to be. And real life doesn't work that way. Everybody's individual. You know, one of the things I learned about being a weatherman was that all the clouds in the sky have been manifesting microscopic ice crystals before the dinosaurs were walking around and they've been, they have been discharging electricity. So we think about something scientific like that and the weather people are like, we don't know why it's doing that, including, you know, with the recent hurricanes that have transpired, you know, that hit Florida. We live in a very crazy place. Like this is a very hostile, you know, we have different types of ticks, diseases, bugs, you know, spiritual stuff aside. This is a very hostile place. And a lot of people are not taking into consideration where we're at in the world, you know? And one of the weird things as well with Imagination Volume 1 is that I wrote this when I was in college. So, you know, one of the things I'm thinking about right now, you know, how is volume two going to be going? And, you know, the things that I experienced, you know, between, you know, whether what came first, a chicken or the egg, you know, what's more important, man or a woman? We are here on this earth. We are here to propagate, you know, have, you know, to continue the gene pool, to continue where we're at, you know, with mathematics, science, to continue our life as long as we can possibly be until it's time to pass the torch. And right now on this planet, we're having the most egotistical sense of selfishness with my way or the highway and unfortunately that's intellectual road rage that's just that's just emotional road rage it's just what it is and when you're on the road you take you're on the highway anything can happen on the road storms happen potholes happen car crashes happen the wind happens you know if you're going from virginia to north carolina you don't know what's going down when you're going through a mountain you could very well see a hurricane literally just do this kind of crazy nonsense it's like you had better slow down turn on the emergency lights and just go at your pace. If you got to pull over, you got to do that. And one of the things with Imagination Volume 1 that I wanted to tell people is to know where they're physically at, where they're at when they're feeling things and sensing things. And you're not wrong with what you could be perceiving. We have such a very closed-minded way of just seeing things. You know, I'm multiracial. My dad's Black and Korean and my mom's French and Cherokee. So I had both two biracial parents with very, I don't want to say differing views on life, but, you know, it's like, where am I at, you know, with the Buddhists? Where am I at with the Koreans? Where am I at, you know, with my African-American side, and the French side, even my Cherokee? And, you know, when I was in college, I met so many different types of people. In fact, I was in Anaheim, California, literally 10 minutes from Disneyland when I wrote Imagination Volume 1. So I was seeing the fireworks that night with Mickey Mouse and so many different types, you know, bells and Disney princesses, you know, just walking out, getting thrown up on with children and stuff. And it's like, oh, this is where we're at now. Right. And it's just this is where we're at with life. We're here to celebrate and love each other. You know, we have differences. We have, you know, different things going on with different types of noodles in a grocery store. I mean, I could take you to any grocery store right now. They are more than likely going to have 15 different types of dry noodles to cook from. And, you know, what sauces go with those, right? I mean, it just what goes with what? You know, what tastes well? You know, and I'm even developing my own Korean Cajun style of cooking. It's like, well, will, will this sauce with soy sauce go with, you know, this type of egg noodle? I don't know, but you got to experiment. And that's what I really want people to come back with, Imagination Volume 1. I want people to really see what's going on with themselves. Taking a, a personal investigation as to what's going on with your life, what's going on with your computer, what's going on with your spirit. You know, we do have a spirit in our bodies and we will continue our lives, you know, when we depart from this world, be that wherever we came from, wherever that we go. When I was in the Navy, I had one of the most traumatic experiences. You know, this is this happened, especially out of combat when I was blamed for killing children. And, you know, I was making a prayer to God on the side of the USS Gunston Hall. And I was like, God, why, wherever, wherever I'm here on this ship illegally, like what, whatever it is, I need a sign, right? And the, the second I made that prayer, I saw my first shooting star and it was green. It literally went from one end to this, wherever that shooting star came from to the other end of my sight. And it just completely disappeared. I'm like, well, that's something that's older than me that just made its presence known. <laughs> Amazing. William, we're almost at a time. I just want to ask you a little bit about the series. This is volume one. How many volumes are you uh, anticipating in the series? 
Well, as many as the fans would like, you know, as long as there's fan interest and people want to see where my mind is going, you know, I am doing entertainment work. I am cross-promoting the Luminous Universe. I'm working with Inkwell and Dorrance Publishing, as well as with Buffalo 8, getting my original intellectual properties off the ground. So there's a lot of different moving parts happening at once. You know, if I get a, a concrete fan base, you know, I'm not really certain how social media works. Right. But, you know, it's like if I find out that, you know, the, the fan base is there, I will continue as writing as many books as I can. Wonderful. You know, and I, I formally request an audience with Vice President Harris and former President Trump, you know, with the stuff that happened with my military career to what's happening now. And, you know, by entertainment intellectually, you know, I don't know where I could fit with the White House. And my great grandfather was an assistant surgeon general under late President Theodore uh, Roosevelt and Woodrow Wilson. So it's not like my family hasn't been up there and I've been given that documentation. <laughs> Amazing. And, you know, my thing, you know, coming post COVID and stuff is that we're here to live and have a good life. And I really want people to take this book, investigate who and what you are, be proud of yourself and love yourself, figure out what you are in the sand of the beach, where you're at in the road. And truly with whatever it is that you do with your life, move forward and have a good time with life. If you don't have to be a bigot and be crazy. Just don't do it. Exactly. Exactly. 30 seconds. Tell us about the luminous universe. It is an original universe that I have been working on since I was 13 years old, possibly as early as 10. This has been something that's been brewing in Hollywood. We do have actors and actresses. I cannot go any further than that. We have people in moving parts. People are figuring out, you know, what to do. And I'm honored and humbled to represent Buffalo 8, Inkwell and Dorrance Publishing, as well as you guys with Atticus Publishing. And wherever things that go, I want dreams to come true and develop a, a positive and loving fan base. Shout out to Ginger Prime and shout out to the gaming community. I am a Mortal Kombat fan, Elden Ring fan, and Don Trail for Final Fantasy XIV. So I do know what's going on in the gaming scene of things. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, the uh, Luminous Universe looks terrific. I hear it could marvel DC or Marvel. And uh, I think that'd be terrific to see uh, a new contender in that uh, space for sure. The name of the book Absolutely. we've been primarily focusing on today is Imagination Volume 1 by William Demps. It is a fascinating nonfiction novel that explores the boundaries between nightmares and dreams, reality and imagination. William is a combat veteran of the U.S. Navy, and he uses his real world experiences and psychic insights to ask deep questions about human potential and the modern world. And as you can see, William has no shortage of energy, so we expect a lot from this author forthcoming. William, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Absolutely, I hope we develop a positive relationship and to all my new fans, I'm gonna do my best to deliver the best work. You have my word on it. I just want the positivity and the best for everyone involved and God bless everyone. God bless you as well. We appreciate your hard work. We appreciate your energy and enthusiasm. And I think the fans out there are going to love this book and other creations by William as well. To the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time on Spotlight. <laughs>